Summer is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Foot Clan, when you're traveling to a destination and you, and you don't know the language, it could be challenging it, even to accomplish the simplest of tasks like, I don't know, finding a bathroom. But thanks to Babbel, the number one selling language learning app, you can learn through bite-sized lessons. Get a, get a new language. Build up a new skill for the real world. Take some of that free time you got and improve your life. And Babbel makes it easier than ever. They have 15-minute lessons that's the perfect way to learn a language on the go. Other language learning apps that use AI for their lessons, lesson plans. But Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. You can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German. Babbel is the way to go to improve your life and learn that language that, look. Bonjour. I know everyone wants to learn a second language, and Babbel's going to get it done. And right now... When you purchase a three-month three month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Go to Babbel.com. Use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALLERS for an extra three months. This is Christian Kirk with the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Back again, Friday, September 17th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Hey, everybody. Howdy, partners. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me bring my southern lawyer back oh, on the show. We won't. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. More matchups to get into today. Some news. We'll be talking about that Thursday night game that once again delivered. Primetime games are being... Um, Jason. Hey, oh, man. I was They're outstanding. I thought that thing was going to be a news fest and it was for the first like quarter and a half and then oh brother that was a great game it was that was just a lot of fun yeah Wacky i mean ending i think the key for the giant success in this game was just elevating daniel jones to that number one spot on the running back depth chart I, that was the it, key it certainly helped it, that he's so good at that yes also sneaky fast defenders you don't need to bite on Saquon quite as hard as... I mean, it was like the same play. It was like, I'm going to hand it to Saquon. Is that psych? Psych, I got you again. It's like, stop biting in so... You, just maybe guard the edge, too. Have you seen Daniel Jones or something unassuming about that man? have you seen Saquon Barkley? Like, I don't... I mean, I, I think you might be wrong, Jay. Like, if you don't bite on Barkley... It turns into that 41-yard run. But it was the edge guy. The edge defender kept, like, when they're faking Saquon up the middle, that edge guy's like, I'm going to get him. <laughs> Dude, just guard the rollout from Daniel Jones. Well, we'll break it down momentarily, but it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Friday is a spectacular day to win a Chris Godwin signed jersey from pristineauction.com. And, uh, well, today, this yeah. Friday, the winner is Platinum Bala, Bala over on Patreon. So thank you for supporting the show, Platinum Bala, over at jointhefoot.com. Sounds like he doesn't even need this jersey. Uh, because he, he's gone platinum. He's a platinum Bala, but, he, I mean, the rich get richer. We will, <laughs> we will send it to him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we know that from Brooksy. Uh, go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. Right back into the Thursday night breakdown. So you were, you were talking about Daniel Jones. He rushed for a career-high 95 yards. Uh, you also had J.D. McKissick with a career-high 83 yards receiving on five receptions. This was not the week one 21-1 to -1 Gibson versus McKissick game. True. And so uh, let's react first to the Washington running back room. 
Gibson was 13 for 69. I think where he really hurt you was two for four in the passing game. Uh, so last week when he didn't score, you still survived because he was, uh, you know, more involved in the in the receiving game. This week you saw McKissick. Just leave me a oh gosh, <laughs> the snap goblin himself <laughs> running out on the field, and um, look, yeah, I... was that a goal line carry? <laughs> <laughs> Two minute drill is mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was for quotes. Uh, we were playing a clip from the field. Uh, look, it, this was the problem with believing Gibson could go to the next level. Is the players that are that live in the next level they get the two minutes, <laughs> and they get the they get the receiving work, and you can't argue with Ron Rivera on a success basis. I don't know. They won week one and lost week two. So, oh, wait. No, they no, should you, have you lost. Need to, you need That's to flip right. that around. Oh, good goodness. Okay, well, <laughs> it's the McKissick show. So the exact opposite of it's, what you said. Fire him up. Uh, five for 83 through the air. You know, Gibson's great. And we can talk and write stories about what a great wide receiver he was in college but that doesn't seem to make Ron Rivera want to play him or run routes from the outside. So what do you do? Yeah. A couple of pedestrian weeks from Gibson. Uh, a couple of, yes, fantasy pedestrian weeks, but I mean, he on the field, Gibson has been tremendous. Uh, I mean, week one, 20 carries. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the highest mark of, his career oh no he hit 20 carries one time or twice last year so that was very encouraging to see that type of usage he had uh, unfortunately you know the the two fumbles that took him out of the running back two range uh but week one was still solid and week two 13 carries for 69 yards a guy he's averaging over five yards a carry we would hope that he would get more work and it almost it should have cost Washington the game that at the the end there where Gibson could have racked up a couple more carries, uh, padded that yardage a little bit more, they decided to throw uh, deep in on their side of the field and it turned into an interception that Washington didn't end up ultimately paying the price for. So I'm holding with Gibson. This I know there is – I've seen my timeline. People are freaked out by Gibson, but this is – this is still very similar to what he was doing last year. He just hasn't scored a touchdown yet, but for which a guy, we thought, neg you know, regression was yes, potential. It was potential certainly a there. potential, but for a player who already has 150 or 160 rushing yards through two weeks, and he hasn't scored yet, that's a little bit of a of feels, a anomaly. That the touchdown regression should go to his favor. Feels a little bit like Kenyon Drake's start to last year. For Gibson, uh, it, possibly, but where, I would where say Drake came on a little bit later and was better. But Gibson looks like he's passing the eye test in a big way. Well, let me let me ask this question then. You have this information before the draft that you lose your quarterback and Ryan Fitzpatrick, and you've got J.D. McKissick used as he's been used. Does it change how you would have drafted Gibson? I don't. I don't think so. I think he would have been drafted at just about the exact same spot, less a hopeful upside of having that top five, top three uh, type of uh, finish. But I, I think his baseline still puts him right about where you would have drafted him. Uh, the only question to me would be if, actually, if someone else like a DeAndre Swift would have maybe supplanted him. I, I, you know, so that would have moved him back one spot. It's hard to be upper echelon without receiving work. Yes, or very. getting into the end zone eleven times like he did last year. And does the the switch of it, this we, we don't know yet because we're only one week in. But because Heineke was the full time starter, did that completely switch up what the game plan was? Where last week Heineke wasn't game planned for, and they stuck with Gibson. Does that is that what's yeah, happening I, now? I don't know. I think Need I think you info. can be very excited about Terry McLaurin's involvement. 14 targets, very. go to receiver, had a couple plays that could have broken long as well that, you know, didn't. He had a touchdown. 
Uh, this was a an exhale that you had on Terry McLaurin after week one and with the quarterback switch. Logan Thomas, solid again, 5 for 45. Uh, it was Ricky Seals-Jones that got the <laughs> touchdown, though. What a great catch. That was a was. Uh, very nice. And very Heineke nice deserves a ton of credit. Like, he was very efficient, 34 for yeah, 46. He was. Um, he made some impressive throws that, you know, I don't know if it was just great coverage on the on the Thursday night football you know, game, but you kind of got the perspective of some of these throws where he was under duress and that's a pro yeah. that's yeah. a pro quarterback. It's it's really, really good news for Terry McLaurin because you you're you're now not afraid of what happened at quarterback. Yes. I, I don't know that you're excited about any other option. On the other side of the ball. Yeah, let's um, go over there. Sterling Shepard has been extremely involved going back to the end of last year. Um obviously uh, more of a PPR guy but he, he's gotten touchdowns um he had one week one didn't get one today but uh or last night but he seems like a re do you believe he has made the transition into a reliable flex option nope well, I still do. not in correct not in yet because you uh what was he week one he was great oh I I fully supported starting him this week once Ingram was ruled out so here's what's happening in the office right now. There is no Evan Ingram. There is no Saquon Barkley in the passing game of any sort. Will there ever and be? And you still have Kenny Galladay and, uh, you know, you got Darius Slayton. Tony's had no targets. I'm not saying that you can't give him a shot, but he feel – I mean, he's, he's kind of like starting Jarvis Landry. So anytime you'd feel comfortable starting Landry, I'm fine starting Shepard. Uh, so, you know, I don't know what that means. But I don't. I don't think. I think we've seen enough from Shepard over multiple years, where he gives you a string of PPR effective games, and then some that aren't. And maybe, maybe this is the year that he does it. But um, I, I just don't feel confident yet. Okay. And then moving over to Saquon Barkley. Yeah. <sighs> Thirteen for fifty-seven had a forty-one yard run, which means that there was uh, twelve for sixteen on the other carries. There was a point. Uh, during the game where Saquon Barkley had already ripped off his 41-yard run, and he had 39 rushing yards on the day. And here's here's why I want to kind of focus on that a little bit. This is who he was his rookie season. You know, it, after the, the big explosion, he, I mean, he crushed for fantasy his rookie year uh, on the back of a lot of receiving work as well. But in the rushing game, this is what it was. Every single week, it was all – or nothing where he had the his physical traits are he he can rip off this 41 yard run at any given moment but if he doesn't he ends up at like two yards per carry when when, when he doesn't hit that home run Jason are are you concerned about Saquon Barkley in this offense where he's not getting like two targets or uh, two receptions yesterday for 12 yards yeah, and, I mean, I, I inefficient running. I brought up uh, early in the offseason. He was my bust candidate. You did, um, yes. Because I I wanted to paint a tr truthful story about what he's been like without Eli Manning even before the injury. But I don't think this this level of what we're seeing. Uh, I'm I'm not scared that he is going to be. He's not washed. He's not a bum. He's not going to be uninvolved. And I think that this was a keep in mind. This was a short week of rest. He hasn't done anything with that sure. knee forever. Um, and now he gets in. It was wasn't sure is he going to play week one. He goes in there, and there were uh, you know interviews before the show or before last night's game talking about how Saquon was you know his knee was sore, and this is really the first experience. Waking up this morning, he was going to have to see how he is, um, and that you know that extra day of rest would have helped him. Now he goes from a short week to a long week um, because uh, you know of the Thursday night game. So I expect that starting this next week. We're going to get uh, a little bit better Saquon than that we've had. That would be buy low opportunity after two weeks. Yeah. Because it's been disappointing. 51 target pace. Obviously, that rookie year was 121 targets. Uh, 73 the next year in limited work. So this is your time to buy if you believe that he's still got juice and he's going to feel more comfortable. Yeah. Um, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I'm going to blitz this news, and you guys jump in wherever you want to. We have nine matchups to get through today. Uh, we have a 
wheel <laughs> a wheel of shame to spin <laughs> yes, later on. We do. So Josh Jacobs wasn't present for Thursday's practice toe ankle injury. Uh, today's the day to pay attention. So if you are supporting us to join the foot, you'll have the Injury Blitz podcast after the Friday practice reports from Matthew Betts, our injury expert. But today's the day to look for for Josh Jacobs. Try to it, trade him now. Try to bench him this week. Yeah, I would pivot. He's playing Pittsburgh, and he, yeah. he already he looked banged up last week. DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams were both limited on Thursday. Uh, groin injury for DeAndre Swift. Yeah. I imagine that – I hope that is maintenance from the early part of that, uh, the offseason. That is what it seems like because I haven't mm -hmm. heard any new news of, of re-aggravation. And uh, the greatest personality in football, Jamal Williams, limited due to a chest injury. You guys saw the clip, I've right? seen it multiple times because okay. it's so fabulous. I have not. The uh, So for those who don't know what we're talking about, there's a clip. They're asking Jamal about him changing teams, and he uses this whole metaphor about how – he's like – I didn't choose to leave. He's like, they dumped me. He said but, they didn't want me. But now I got a, I got a new relationship. They're feeding me. They're taking care they're of taking me. Taking me out to dinners. He's just such a delightful man. Yeah. Uh, I, I recommend everyone try and find the Jamal Williams clip. Will Fuller is out in week two with a personal issue. The The mispractice yesterday was due to personal reasons, okay. not not due to an injury. So um, he won't be here in week two due to the personal situation and i don't know anything more than that yeah hollywood brown returned to practice after missing wednesday and thursday with an ankle injury that's good uh maybe takes watkins off the board as a spot start john U. smith limited in practice on thursday with a hip situation you don't love midweek situations but let's pay attention today jameson crowder was activated uh but limited due Activate. to a groin injury yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> man i mean I, it's always interesting when somebody's activated from injured reserve or COVID list, and then all of a sudden you're still hurt or you got hurt during yeah. that time. Zach Ertz limited on Thursday. Um, I think he's playing. And then Trey Sermon will be active for week two against the Eagles. Thank you for clearing that up, 49ers. Yeah, it is something. Did anybody ask about Elijah? <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to sit Elijah this week. That would be difficult for me emotionally. <laughs> That would be difficult for the entire fantasy football world. Uh, Trey Sermon should run behind Elijah. Yes. And um, as somebody who paid $91 for the missile, I hope he fumbles. Is that wrong to say? You hope, you hope Trey, Trey Sermon, Sermon fumbles. That is, is what you that want is to correct. clarify that. Because uh, what you put out in the world yeah. is that you hope that Elijah missiles. That is what you I am, I'm sorry. I do not Apologize hope to that. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by the leader in breaking news alerts, Sleeper. Grab the Sleeper app. Uh, you probably have it because you're probably playing a league on there. But if you don't, mega level. yeah, yeah, you're playing in the mega. I am. My team is looking good. I went zero RB and I added Elijah Mitchell. And you're having a good time going zero RB. It's mm -hmm. been a good experience. It's been for very you. fun. Into the forecast. Fantasy Forecast. Bengals, Bears, Texans, Browns, Rams, Colts, Bills, Dolphins, Patriots, Jets, 49ers, Eagles. All on yesterday's show. So if you want those matchups, uh, you're not going to find them here. You're going to find them on that excellent show from yesterday. Oh, it was so good. It was. All right. Nine games left. Raiders heading to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. DraftKings Sportsbook line. Steelers minus six and a half. Over-unders, 47 points in this game. Raiders with the, uh, you know, very predictable week one win against Baltimore. Steelers, they survived. Their defense, mm -hmm. special teams, and not a lot from Buffalo. So looking at this game, you got short rest for the Raiders. They have to travel east on paper. The Steelers should mop the floor with them, right? You should Correct. take care of your home field. And take care of this game, and then you have a situation with all of the offensive pieces in Las Vegas because you're facing a, a a tremendous defense that slowed down a much better offense in Buffalo last week. So, Josh Jacobs, you're looking to pivot. I'm not chasing Brian Edwards or Henry Ruggs in this matchup. Agreed. I mean, there's one man and one man only. Oh yeah, <laughs> and that's that's how Derek Carr feels. Did you uh, – well, that's how John Gruden feels. That's how Gruden feels too. Because Gruden came out. I don't know if you saw it. His quote was, 
He's the best player I have ever coached. I'm going to keep looking for him. It was kind of a in your face when you say don't give him 19 targets, which as a fantasy manager of Darren Waller, I mean, put the court up on the wall. That thing is amazing for your team. Yeah, I mean, he is as sure as anyone in the league. He's going to get his targets, his yards, his catches. Um, that's not the issue. I think the question is what we saw at the end of the game with Brian Edwards. Will he be involved enough to be a flex option? He he actually kind of was last week, even though he wasn't involved for 98% of the game. Um, is he just a keep your eye on him? Is he a complete absolutely can't start because of the Steelers defense? He is. Yeah, he's on the bench. He's on me. the bench. I'm the, I and feel Mike's like, the one that's yeah, the authority here. I'm the resident Brian Edwards truther, but – one let's see one more week the hope is that they saw the end of the game and and Derek He's part Carr, of the game plan Derek Carr goes oh that Brian Edwards guy is actually pretty good I should throw to him some more but un until we see that again it, this is this one's easy for the Raiders just, I'm playing Waller and nobody else I think we learned that John Gruden calls plays for Darren Waller yeah and Derek Carr that's the first read on the play and he doesn't generally pivot from the first read no, he does. So no, it's, he it's does a little not. bit of Gruden, and it's a little bit of Carr, and I think it's the right thing to do, at least with the evidence we have so far. And those plays that are called for rugs, that's when Carr audibles out, and he's like, "I'm going to throw it to Waller." I am a, I am on the other side. I'm a little concerned about the Steelers' offense. This is, I think, okay. the perfect matchup because the Raiders are not a roll over and die defense at all, and they're also not the Buffalo Bills from last week. They're, they're, I, I see them as completely average. And the Steelers really didn't get anything going last week. Uh, Big Ben didn't look good. Najee obviously didn't look good behind that offensive line. So this is one where I'm going to start these guys. I'm going to start Najee. I'm going to start Deontay Johnson. I think you could start Chase Claypool and Juju. The, the, the matchup and they're at home. What about Big Ben? Big, well, yeah, sure. I'm going to throw him in the lineup too. I'm, I, I, I think that the projection is that they have good performances. But there is the thread behind the scene of saying I, I could see – you got the binoculars. If it, if it goes on, you're, you're poorly, watching. I'm going to sound a red alert because um, Big Ben is older, and this is a defensive team. Um, I think Big Ben actually said after that game, he's like, "Yeah, we're 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 gonna win games with our defense." <laughs> I was like, "Well, you're the quarterback. Say say better things about your offense." Well, and and the offensive lines are not good in this game, and I was impressed with the defensive line from Las Vegas last week. I think this is a defense that has made massive improvements. Some of the names that they brought in there, you saw Max Crosby putting pressure on Lamar, and that's not an easy thing to do. Right. And if this offensive line is struggling for Pittsburgh, because, you know, Najee had 100% of the snaps last week, not a great game. Um, yeah, well, it'll be, a, it'll be a bit of an alert for, for fantasy players. Before we move on to the New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers game, we want to thank today's sponsors, keeping the show going. Let's start with stamps.com. Quick question for you, Mike. Are you still going to the post office and paying full price for postage? I'd rather be dead. Right. That's not pleasant. Post office? Death or the post office. Get out of my face, post uh, office. Is the 1800s? <laughs> Do I ride my wagon? To the post office? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to. Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS as well right to your computer. It's a must-have for any business. We have used them since day one. Whether you were a small office sending invoices, a side hustle, uh, whatever the case may be, with Stamps.com you get discounts up to 40% off post office rates and up to 60% off UPS shipping rates. Stop wasting time in your wagon going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code FOOTBALLERS, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type FOOTBALLERS. That's stamps.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. And Foot Clan, how's your back? Hmm. How's your neck? I appreciate you asking. How was your sleep? How how are you sleeping at night? Because I'll bet some of you out there got a soggy, nasty old mattress. Soggy? Yeah, it's just it's out in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, just some nasty. <laughs> it's old, raining. Nasty, soggy, thick, soggy, saggy, 
Saggy is the word. I mean. Yeah, but what if it's wet? Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. It's, I mean, time to replace it, right? Look, I'm telling you. Dipped it in milk. Firsthand, I love my Helix mattress. If you're on Team Hefty Boys with me, they have a like a mattress designed for uh, people up there in the LBS. Uh, and uh, that's me. Maybe that's you. But they have a mattress for everyone. You take a quiz. You tell them exactly what you want. You like soft mattresses, medium, firm. Do you sleep on your side, your back, your stomach? Do you move around all night? Uh, they and and it's not one of these gimmicky like oh take this mattress and then tell me what you want we'll just give you the same mattress we all took this quiz we all got different mattresses we all love it i mean this is the overall mattress pick of 2020 by gq and wired magazine helix mattresses are great and they are offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash footballers. That's helixsleep.com slash footballers for up to $200 off and two free pillows. The 1-0 Saints traveling to Carolina to take on the 1-0 Carolina Panthers. Ooh. DK Sportsbook line, Saints minus 3.5, over-under is 44.5. It's oh. not too high. No respect for what the Panthers did in week one. Correct. Uh <laughs> You won't have Marshawn Lattimore out there. I mean, that's going to help the passing attack for the Panthers. Are either quarterback options this week? I mean, I guess you'd stay away from Darnold completely, but... That is correct. What about old Winston? I think Winston is a is a streamer. I mean, he was he was on our streaming episode because when you go up, he didn't throw for a lot of yards, but you can't ask him to do anything more than he did. Um, five touchdowns, and now you've got the Carolina Panthers defense, which looked good week one. Could ask for six. Uh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. You can always ask for more. Um, but yeah, I, th I think he's a streaming option. I'm really really interested in Carolina this week, They're, especially their defense. I think they had six sacks week one, um, but it was obviously the Jets. The right? Jets. Yeah. And so it's hard to tell. Like when you only have that week one sample, it's like maybe it's possible we're making too much of how bad the Jets offensive line were uh, was and, and not giving enough credit to the Carolina Panthers defensive line, or maybe that's exactly what it is. We're going to find out this week. One crazy Winston stat I have to bring up just to circle back there for a split second. Last week, the Winston pass to Deontay Harris traveled 50 yards in the air. Drew Brees attempted 9,421 passes for the Saints. He never had a touchdown that went 50 yards in the air. Wow. What? Isn't that crazy? I mean, he had a 50-yard touchdown. He just yeah. did 50 air yards on the throw. That's wild. So, um, Moonball. Yeah, I wouldn't expect five touchdowns, but it's a it could be a good matchup for Winston on the road. Alvin Kamara, you always play him. Same with McCaffrey on the other side. Despite the matchup being tougher, mm -hmm. he is involved in the passing game. He is immune to bad games. He cannot have them. I think that's true. He's I immune. think that's true. I think he's immune to bad games. His bad game is going to be a top 20 running back for sure. 100%. And uh, DJ Moore, 6 for 80 last week, 83% of snaps. He is the number one for this team. And uh, so far, so good on the breakout season for DJ Moore. I I think you should try and trade for DJ Moore right now. Really? Like, I've, I mean, I've, I've always loved DJ Moore, but I, it, Andy, you're kind of on the the side of that. The breakout is yeah. coming. Oh yeah, this year. DJ Moore, look, look, look at the numbers: a 24 percent target share, eight. So that turned into eight targets. Uh, they gave him a, a attempt out of the backfield. There was, and he caught six of his eight. And I think one was like a really egregious drop that is not normal for DJ Moore. Just saying that I'm I feel very confident that DJ Moore before sooner than later is about to explode the, for fantasy. The implied point total in this game for the Panthers is just twenty points. Is there a chance that you know, if he has a down week in this bad matchup that you go get him at that point? Yeah, I was going to say, you might want to hold off a week if you believe. I mean, obviously, Lattimore being gone makes a big difference. And if he explodes this week, you're not going to get him. So you got to call your shot. But I, I, don't, I don't anticipate this being a perfect matchup or a high-scoring affair for the Panthers this week. You, would you get him now? I'm saying that if he has, because it wasn't X, it wasn't tremendous for fantasy last week. And this week may not be incredible, but if he has anything that's an, that resembles an okay game, whoever has more isn't going to be looking to trade them. So I mean, you're definitely gambling on this week if you don't go after him right now. 
The target total for Robbie Anderson is going to be one of the things I'm most interested in in Certainly. week two of the season to see if he is, in fact, relegated to lower totals because of McCaffrey or whether that was a, a one-off, whether he's a boom-bust guy or can be more relied on. Callaway on the other side, Marco, Marquez Callaway, wide receiver for the Saints. That would be a, a, a potential flex for me. Uh, now that he is uh, freed up from Jair, I'd give him a shot. Troutman's a desperation play at tight end. I would agree. And the last name to throw out there, Terrace Marshall Jr., rookie wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers. He was running 83% of his snaps in the slot. He's going to be that short, get the ball out quick guy. The defensive pressure from the Saints, what the what you know, they what they did to Aaron Rodgers and the Packers last week. I expect that there's going to be a lot of uh targets at least. Not necessarily high value, but if you're in a PPR league um and and for DFS where his his cost is next to nothing um i do think he'll have enough targets he had the highest uh, percentage of routes targeted in week one are you trying to tell us something about your upcoming lineup jason uh, i don't know stay tuned and we'll see <laughs> the denver broncos but yes <laughs> oh i spoiled it didn't i <laughs> the one and all broncos travel to the jacksonville jaguars DraftKings has the line Broncos minus six on the road. That is, um, I'll take it. That is an indictment. Yes, it is an urban indictment on Ooh. Mr. Meyer. Um, over under is forty five in this game. That puts Jacksonville under twenty. Broncos at twenty five and a half. What do you do with James Robinson? Like, do you play James Robinson or Tyson with the rotating backfield in Baltimore? Tyson, I, I think that. Tyson is you. You've got yeah, to take the a Chiefs, right? You, you have correct. to take a, a slight wait and see approach on James Robinson if you can. Um, I, I I thought Saquon was going to have a very very bad game last night. Still started him over James Robinson. I am not terrified of James Robinson's outlook rest of season, but the Broncos are a good defense, and I'm not just going to say I'm right that he's going to be the clear one of this committee. I want to wait and see. So I, I think you you bench James Robinson if you can this week. Do you – what's funny about the Jacksonville offense is you know that there's a likelihood to be throwing the ball a lot. Correct. And you had relevant fantasy games from all three wide receivers last week in a, in a brutal defeat. Anybody that rosters Chark, Jones, Chenault, the juniors, anybody that rosters them is kind of happy with the one they have. Like I've noticed sure, that. Like, right. And it's like, oh, I prefer Shark to the other two I don't have. I prefer Chenault. that because he's on my team. And so, I mean, how do you do you look at them all the same in terms of projections? I mean, they're they're sitting Chenault thirty six, Marvin forty one, Shark forty three on our rankings right now. But is that how you view them? Like, yeah, I I do I do view them um, uh, similar. Well, no, no, not according to the rankings. I view them how they. They finished week one, I thought was what you were saying. Um, I think Chark is is the number one. He showed that in week one. The the Marvin Jones late garbage time helped him to be okay. And while Visca has the guaranteed uh, volume when it comes to manufactured touches, he's going to touch the ball the most. They're very low value. So if he doesn't break, and, and he can, he could break you know a screen 80 yards and get a touchdown, um, but they're all at the line of scrimmage. So if you're in a PPR league, uh, and you know a five yard reception is worth a point and a half. Then I like Visca. Otherwise, I I I'm gonna probably put Chark in my lineup. James, does that, is, does that hurt you? Because I know you've been. No, I mean it's fine. I I still don't agree. I still think Marvin's the one, but um, we'll see how week two and three goes. I'm willing to let the players on the field tell me the truth. Uh, Chenault's the safest in terms of guaranteed PPR. Uh, touches like you said James O'Shaughnessy ran the third most tight end routes he is interesting yes um as a I mean O'Shaughnessy or Troutman Troutman Tr Troutman okay but it, it wasn't like, didn't O'Shaughnessy have how many targets did he have eight yeah he he had a a, a lot eight of targets six catches 48 yards yeah and uh Troutman had the s five or six six, yeah, six, six I believe yeah but O'Shaughnessy just curious. He's on the. He's definitely on the radar. He was. He was someone who, at least just week one, he popped up similar to the way that uh, that Jared Cook did, where they ran a lot of routes uh, on the field. They had a 
a lot of a high percentage of the routes that were getting targeted. So I'm going to monitor it. This isn't the particular matchup that I'm excited to play that level of a tight end, though. So this week it would be Troutman. Much rather play Noah Fant on the other side. Oh, it, yeah. Well, that's not fair. Noah Fant has an opportunity here. Uh, eight targets last I'd week. I'd rather play Waller. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you think of Noah Fant like that now. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. Better than O'Shaughnessy? <laughs> um, no, in, as in, the same breath, crazy. in the same breath as Waller. No, he what, would rather play Waller. He likes Waller better. He compared my Fant comparison to Waller. <laughs> Uh, Melvin Gordon's my start of the week at running back. I also think you can flex Javante Williams. Both should have a meaningful game. Bridgewater, solid debut, 28 for 36 last week. Lost Jerry Judy, though, and Judy was a, you know, he was six of those yeah. 28 completions and, and a lot of the yards. So Cortland Sutton, he's a wait and see. I think you can, you know, if there was ever a week to just grab somebody and put them right into your flex, Tim Patrick and, and KJ Hamler are interesting on that front. Agreed. I'm starting KJ Hamler, and the the matchup that he has against uh, the cornerback rookie Tyson Campbell, who gave up a 158.3 passer rating last week, is great. And you have the fact that Jerry Judy, who in his rookie year was almost – uh, ex- not exclusively, but predominantly, I think it was like 80% was on the outside. In this first week of, of the season, Jerry Judy ran a lot from the slot and was targeted, f- uh, you know, ha- was off to a great the, start. ran from the slot a lot? Yeah, slot a lot. Um, and that's where uh, Teddy Bridgewater. how he got caught. There you go. Um, but K.J. Hamler is kind of going to be in that role. I, I think K.J. Hamler is a, a, a an absolute – He's interesting. Fine flex play this week. I would put him in my lineup. We, a, a funny question here because I, I could see a situation. Would you flex Hamler or Fant if you had to choose? Oh, that's a great question. Th- there are a couple weird tight end situations like that, like Goddard. Like some people might have Goddard or Fant as a – they pick them up because they're trying to figure out who their tight end is. And I would flex Hamler. I would flex Hamler as well. But it, it is interesting to think that Fant might be in consideration for – a flex if he, if he is a second tight end on your roster. I, I wonder if I would play Hamler and Patrick uh, over DJ Chark, Marvin Jones, or Visca on the other side of the ball. Mm, I wouldn't. It's just tough, man, to trust what you saw from the Jags. I think one. you're going to see Gordon and Javante so much more involved than James Robinson and Carlos Hyde that I don't know. I want the other other extra twenty pass attempts or yeah, something. Yeah, the, the game scripts. Uh, let's talk about some other cornerback matchups here. Minnesota Vikings, zero and one, traveling to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Cardinals uh, DK Sportsbook line here. Cardinals minus four. Over under is fifty and a half. Uh, that puts the Cardinals at about twenty seven points. Vikings at twenty three. Huge week from the Cardinals offense. Uh, Kyler Murray accounted for five touchdowns, one on the ground, four through the air, two touchdowns for Hopkins, two for Christian Kirk. Um, I don't remember when we were talking about the Christian Kirk situation. Was it before the show yesterday? Who knows, man? I can't tell when. It's all a blur. Where where am I? I think uh, Tuesday during Where There's Smoke, There's Fire. Yes, but I was talking about to these guys yesterday that there could be some staying power to the Christian Kirk universe right now, the breakout, because he is a he's a prolific slot receiver, but last year only had about – 15, 16% of his snaps from the slot. He was forced to play outside. The Cardinals had no other outside options. This year they bring in A.J. Green, and the argument's kind of like A.J. Green may be freeing Christian Kirk up to fly because he, he ran 70-something percent of his snaps in the in the slot last week. Something to monitor with yeah. Christian Kirk. And being at home against Minnesota that just gave up pretty good games to Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, it's something to look at. Now, this is, I'm, I'm just putting it out there, this is my play-or-go game for A.J. Green. If he can't do it against Brashad Breeland, who gave up a ton of yards last week, at home in Arizona against Minnesota this week, it's done. I will cut A.J. Green, and I will, I will apologize oh, no. for believing. So then you're saying that those who are rostering A.J. Green right now, they, they you know, if he is – even in consideration, you should start him this week. Should I play or should I go game for AJ Green? And this is I would I would be willing to flex AJ Green in this game. Yes. So the the poetic justice that the Minnesota Vikings will be the ones that initiate the Viking funeral for AJ Green. Okay. Okay. I see. I mean, the arrow is lit. Yeah. 
Uh, Would you like to jump in my time machine? I think, uh, yeah, you said that earlier this week. I think A.J. Green has a fine game. He was targeted six times last week. He had an end zone target. You guys can disagree. You will. I know you will. Yeah. Um, He's got a great matchup in this one, and they're going to get him on track at home. Chase Edmonds, 58% of snaps in week one. You can play him. Mm -hmm. Uh, James Conner, I do not have confidence to play. I think he is a fine flex option. We, We talked about last week on the road when you were not favored, not necessarily the best opportunity. It turned out that they did win the game, and he, he was about to get a goal line carry right on the one. Uh, penalty called that back. But in this game at home, in a favored matchup, I, I think you're playing James Conner when there's an opportunity for a touchdown. This game appears to me to be one where you would target a touchdown. I would agree. You would play him. I'd mm-hmm. flex As him, a yeah. flex, yeah. He just was not out there in the first half when the game was competitive. But Chase Edmonds is a good play this week. Uh, what about uh, DeAndre Hopkins? You pro Hopkins? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a chance. I'm going to give him a chance. I think that the, if he doesn't do good this week, I'm going to play him next week. But I, but if he doesn't do good two weeks in a row, I'll play him. All right, I need some help because last week I played A.J. Brown or Julio in a lot of DFS lineups because the, the at-home Tannehill Cardinal secondary narrative, uh, well, burned me. It burned me bad. Well, because they didn't is need this, a secondary. Is this the bounce back game for Justin Jefferson? Is this another solid week for Adam Thielen? Or do the Cardinals at home with the pass rush eliminate those guys? Because no one's going to argue that Julio and A.J. Brown aren't elite wide receivers, but they were rendered irrelevant by yeah, the Cardinals' the, defense. The, the pass rush of the Cardinals was unbelievable. J.J. Watt combined with Chandler Jones. The Tennessee Titans could not handle that, and – if you remember watching that Minnesota Vikings game against the Bengals in week one, every single play, Kirk was under pressure, and the, the Cincinnati Bengals D-line looked really tough. Um, so that could be that the Minnesota offensive line was not good. That being said, Tennessee was surprised by it. Uh, Minnesota is not going to be surprised by Chandler Jones. They've got the tape, and they're going to be prepared. Um, they will not be surprised when they cannot stop the pass rush <laughs> of Arizona. Entering the, the season... Minnesota graded out as the 27th best offensive line from pro football focus. It, I think this will be more of the same for the Arizona DST. Which says to me, I think Justin Jefferson's fine, but Adam Thielen might not be a great play. You don't think Thielen is a great play? Well, it's one of those things where if if the pass rush is getting through and they're not able to do much, a la what you saw from the Tennessee Titans, um, you you need a yak guy. You need a guy who's going to make plays happen. Um, while while Adam Thielen is still great, I don't see him making things happen on his own, getting the ball in space and then breaking tackles and going in for a twenty five yard score. Justin Jefferson can and probably will do that. Dalvin Cook disappointed in week one, still the RB eight. So you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm. Preparing myself to to have the lower those expectations a little bit for Dalvin this week. Any Falcons, conk? no, no conk, conk, no conk. Okay, no. Cardinals have historically been terrible at tight end. Not last year. Not last year. Last year they were horrific against. They were tight six end, against they? tight ends last year. You're thinking back two years. Hmm. They were outstanding last year. The Falcons that, taking it on. Just, it the, just took such a toll on you, Jason. It was. It was a big mark. <laughs> it, and, was, and, it was years. They they didn't give up anything last week. Not that Ferkser was yeah. a big threat, or anybody <laughs> was a threat. Falcons, Buccaneers, Buccaneers at home. My goodness, DraftKings Sportsbook line: Buccaneers minus twelve and a half. That's thirty two points <laughs> over under fifty one and a half. Uh, I don't think anybody hesitates taking money line on the Buccaneers this week, but. What's the truth about the Falcons' offense? Are we going to get it in week two? I mean, it's going to be really hard not to react, right? If if uh, Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts, and this Falcons' offense, including Matt Ryan, just fizzles and dies in a negative game script, which Ryan's not great at. I mean, he's not great at garbage time production. Correct. Um, and he's not Dak, where no. he can't – if the pressure starts coming in, he can't extend the play. It's just that the play is, is over. But, they, I mean, you're going to be afraid. You're going to be worried yes. about the Falcons after this week, and you're going to be worried about the draft capital you spent on Ridley. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair point. Going back and watching the Falcons, th- that game was so bizarre. Of Through the 
I, mean, I think going into the second quarter, the team, the Falcons already had over a hundred rushing yards. They looked, they drove the the ball down the field, no problem in the first quarter. They got destroyed by penalties and dumb mistakes, like Kyle Pitts thinking he's still in college and only getting one foot down. And like, I, I'm not sounding the panic alarm on the Atlanta Falcons offense just yet. It, and Mike Davis. While I don't want him running up against the, the the Buccaneers' front line, he was very active in the passing game. I'm uh, trying to pull up the number real quick, but 18% target share. Like those those outside numbers, Davis is still an okay low-end running back to play this week. I would not play him. I'll take the targets. I mean, uh, Zeke last week against Tampa Bay, Cordero taking a bunch of work. What would you do with Mike Davis? Yeah, if I if I can sit Mike Davis, I I would. Let me ask you this question: Mike Davis or James Conner, Andy? Mike Davis. Okay, so then you really hate James James Conner. Um, uh, yeah, I, I Mike, I'm Mike Davis or one of the Tampa running backs. I'd play Fournette and Ronald Jones over Mike Davis. Yeah, I I, I think if you can bench Mike Davis, it's probably a smart move. Um, this is an anti funnel defense where uh, la last year and what we saw week one so far, almost impossible to do anything on the ground, but you can throw on them. So, uh, you know, I, Calvin Ridley, you're going to start no matter what, but I think he's going to be fine. Kyle Pitts, you you have to start because you drafted him so high. He's a giant question. He's your, your start of the week, so you think he's going to be fine, Andy. Um, this will be a really telling game for him because it should be okay. This isn't a great team against tight end. Um, and they're going to have to throw the ball because I think we all expect the Buccaneers are not going to have struggles scoring on the Falcons. Uh, yeah, I, I think Pitts will get 8 to 10 targets. What he does with them, we're about to find out. Evans, Godwin, Brown, Gronk, all in? They're yep. all in play. All right, the Cowboys at 0-1, taking on the Los Angeles Chargers, who won last week. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Chargers minus 3.5. Over-unders, 54.5. I... Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I was a little surprised at the line. Obviously, now, midway through the week, we have DeMarcus Lawrence yep. and, the, and the situation there. But... Andy's almost upset of the week. Okay. Those Cowboys on the road coming off a, a, an impressive first game, in my opinion offensively against Tampa Bay. I guess you like losses. I do. <laughs> they lost impressively. That's right. Just like the just Honestly, like the they Giants. did lose impressively. They did. <laughs> that's that's did, did, well the, said. did the Browns not lose impressively? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Impressive. Okay. Impressive loss. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've got the Chargers and Cowboys game. What are you looking at in this one? It uh, all, baby. <laughs> everything. I'm looking at Okay, everything. what are you not looking at? Because if you're out there, you know the options. I'm not going to start Josh Palmer yet. Oh, you got, wide, you got rookie, me good. Rookie wide receiver for the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. Can you I'm, start a tight end on Dallas? I think they're in play for a desperation start. Which yes. one, Mike? <laughs> I would I'll there, give the edge to Dalton. There's better options. I don't think anybody needs to play Jarwin or Dalton Schultz because Jared Cook was available on the waivers. Um, you know, we, we had some waiver pickups this week that I would play over Jarwin and Schultz. You, what if that's you're not to a, say they can't. What if you're in a five tight end league? <laughs> well, then he, they're rostered yeah. and you throw uh, every tight end you have yes, I would, in your lineup. I would much rather have Jared Cook because it, it could just be the Blake Jarwin game where uh, there was one particular route this past week where Jarwin was – you could see Dak was looking at Jarwin as the primary target, and it was going to be an end zone target. He just the the pass rush got there and and blew up the play. But I'm just saying that I believe in the over under. I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Both teams are going to have to to put up points, so that just there'll be a lot of routes, a lot of targets going around. So you might as well give it a shot. Speaking of routes, Zeke had 44 of them last week. The, this is going to be a better week for Zeke. Yes, absolutely. Agreed. You're a gonna, Zeke week. If you want Zeke on your team, you've got to trade for him before this this coming week. Titans, after the egregious week one at home, they get the privilege of going to the Seahawks and uh, traveling up north. DraftKings line here, Seahawks minus six, over-unders 54 points. One of the highest of the week. That's why Russell's my start of the week. I think he could be the best 
quarterback. He could. In week two. Metcalf and Lockett, they're easy decisions. Carson, yep, he's in your lineup. Not a lot of hard choices on the Seahawks side of the ball, to be honest. Correct. I, not a lot of decisions to be made. Still watching the tight end position because Will Disley, uh, Gerald Everett, they both ran the same amount of routes pretty much. So it's kind of maybe the way you'd look at Schultz and Jarwin where it's – Very similar, but I wouldn't expect as much offensive output being necessary for the, the Seahawks. You know, they're going to be able to run the ball. I think Chris Carson is great. So I'm not starting Everett or Disley. Are the unless, Titans losing again in this one? Oh, the Titans are, are going to get massacred in this game. So it will be not an impressive loss? It will be a regular old L. <laughs> uh, so what do you do with their offensive pieces in a regular old L? Well, if well, you're if you're projecting the Seahawks to cover, but the over-under has the Titans – implied point total at 24. A.J. Brown is still in your lineup. He's too good not to be. Derrick Henry's obviously still in your lineup. He's too good not to be. Julio's going to be a question, and and I think he'll probably be in most people's lineups where you drafted him, um, and you're going to be doing the... <gasps> Julio or <laughs> Mike your, Williams? Holding your breath. That's a Ooh. great question. I would rather have Mike Williams. I think the, the points and the over-under and the, and 12, chase the dragon of 12 those targets? targets from week one. I mean, you've got a talented player with a talented quarterback and a lot of targets. Um, I, I know that the fantasy football draft capital, it was very different between these two players, but the the talent um, is there for Mike Williams. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm not saying that the talent is not there. The implication is that the talent isn't there for I, – I thought that's what you meant. Like. No, no. That's, I'm, not, I'm not saying that Julio is not talented. I'm just saying Mike Williams is not a, not a scrub guy that ended up with 12 no targets. No question, no question. He's in Ogletree week one. He right. could be. I mean, he's had a big weeks before. I'm going to give Julio another week, Mike. Are you going to give him another week ahead of Mike Williams? Uh, yes. Okay. But Tannehill that's... or Winston? <laughs> Tannehill on the road. Man. I'll take Tannehill. I'll take Tannehill as well. Yep. Derrick Henry, better week for him? That was his worst, I think his worst rushing game since week five of last year against the Cardinals. Still had 21 opportunities, and I liked the targets. Yeah, I, I think it is a better uh, week for Derrick Henry. He should be fine. He uh, there's there's some uh, some rain uh, projected for this game. A little bit rain. A little bit little bit rain. Possible light consistent rain. A little <laughs> you know soggy floors. Right. Um, soggy like mattress the mattresses. Games. Now, how does a Yeti perform in in the slosh? It, no, but if in the rain. Yet he's fine in the rain. All right. Yet he's good in the rain. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm fine with uh, Derrick Henry. He has a, a better game this week. Sunday night football, another great one. Primetime game. I can't wait to watch the Chiefs. Oh, baby. Taking on the Ravens. Sportsbook line here. Baltimore's at home. Chiefs are favored by three and a half. Over-unders, 54 and a half. I mean, this is – are the Ravens and Titans starting 0-2? Yes. Yep. Mike and I, was it yesterday's show yeah, where we both footcast. said that we think the – oh, on the footcast? Yeah. Where we both think the Chiefs may just – Mop the floor I would, with the Ravens? Yeah, it, I would take the cover on the points. You could be missing Ronnie Stanley on the offensive line. Uh, the offense looked kind of on and off in that first game for Baltimore. Yes. And Kansas City, not not a delight full matchup for Mr. Lamar Jackson and company. So what, what are your starts at decisions on the offensive side for the home team? Lamar is in your lineup, but Tyson – you know, so much has come out, so much speculation. Um, they talk, they, they basically are saying, hey, they're just going to rotate backs. They're going to rotate backs through the offense. Is Tyson going to be the highest scoring back on this team for another week? I think he is. Um, it's certainly a not a gimme. This is if Latavius comes out and gets more carries, gets the goal line work, sure. If Devonta Freeman ends up more involved than we think and – um, it takes away from Tyson, that could happen. But my projection, I do think Tyson is still going to be the first back up, get the majority of the work, and get the high leverage work that will have him finish as the number one running back. And I'm fine starting Tyson this week. Um, some of these players like this, you have to call your shot on it. You can't, you know, we, we've been talking about some players you want to take a wait-and-see approach, and that's fine. Sometimes you can't, and this is a situation where I think if you, you, you're you going to need to start him, and I think he's going to be fine. All right. What about the passing game options? Hollywood, Sammy. 
Mark Andrews. Andrews. Andrews is who you start. You drafted him. You were disappointed week one. You're going to be fine this week. Kansas City has never been tough against tight ends. And, and Mark Andrews, if you didn't watch that game last week, he was a foot away from a great bomb, yep. you know, reception where it, it wouldn't have been a, you know, he would have had, you know, eight, nine fantasy points and you would have been like, eh, I'm disappointed, but he didn't crush you. Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey are the auto starts on the Kansas City side. Yep. Uh, Clyde is probably an auto start for you too, but what are your expectations against this Baltimore defense in Baltimore after kind of a meh week one? Yeah, I mean, Baltimore's defense was kind of meh week one as well. Obviously, it was a lot of kind of fortuitous touchdowns to the running backs and Josh Jacobs. Um, but I, I do think that uh, Clyde edwards alaire is going to be fine this week. I would expect him to have at least double-digit fantasy points, and, and you got to start him. Yeah, very encouraged by the snaps, um, the opportunities. I, he, he was in for 72% of the snaps. He only surpassed 70% twice last year. I mean, he was he was the dude. It like the the fears of is Clyde gonna be bad because he's gonna be in a full timeshare with Daryl Williams at least for one week. That wasn't there. the The problem was that he didn't score, and we need more targets for Clyde. But I'm at least encouraged by the by the, the those peripheral outside numbers that he's still play. I think he's gonna be outside the top 24 again with the tough matchup on the road here. He was uh, 14 for 43. 3.1 a carry last week, and um, the offense is Tyreek, Patrick Mahomes, and Kelsey. So I'm gonna maybe if you if you believe in him, maybe you buy low after this week on the road. Sure. Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, Monday Night Football. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Packers minus 11 and a half. Over under is 48 and a half in this game. Everyone wants to know. Everyone's expecting the Green Bay Packers to just, I don't know, uh, install their normal version of software and fix it, all the bugs looks, from week it's one payback time this week it's 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 vengeance it's you know it's who are they paying back again uh, they're paying back the, the the well the payback goes to the saints yeah but they're taking it out on the lions because they couldn't take it out on the saints sometimes, that's the expectation sometimes the router is terrible and you're like how is this thing broken and you just unplug and replug it back in you're like oh this thing works perfectly <laughs> right yeah so i'm <laughs> Uh, so is Rogers. that the truth here? Is is the router fine and it just needed a reboot here for the Packers? For me, going into week two, I would say yes. My, I'm, I'm my playing Rodgers. I'm my, playing Jones. My big worry that I've I've thought about a little bit more, and, and again, maybe the Detroit Lions are the, um, the salve for the worry, but the offensive line looked really, really bad for the Packers. They've got two rookies on there. They lost a lot of pieces. And, you know, you saw that on some of the, the interceptions that were thrown. I mean, there's been a lot said about Aaron Rodgers getting nut punched uh, for one of those interceptions. But he was on the move. And granted, the Saints defensive line, greater sign, the Lions defensive line. But is it possible that the, the offensive line for the Packers has taken such a step backwards that the Packers offense is not going to be a prolific well, you know, one of those top five offenses on the course of the season. Devontae Adams is in your lineup. Aaron Jones is in your lineup. Do you take a That's the answer. <laughs> okay. Do you take a shot with A.J. Dillon? Uh, maybe because of the cleanup opportunity. Yeah, I mean, if you're favored, if you're, if you're at home, 30 points implied total, favored by almost 12. I don't know. Yeah. I've... If you are ever going to play him, right, isn't this that... the week? If you're gonna play him without an injury to Aaron Jones, this would be the week that you play him. James but if Connor or AJ Dillon. That was Jason. the name I was gonna bring up. I'd rather have James Connor than AJ Dillon. Okay. Would Any you, other would you rather Andy AJ Dillon or James Connor? Um I feel like I'm being trapped into like saying I despise James no. Connor beyond all measure, but I'll take AJ Dillon. Okay. That's that's fair. Um uh, heavier favorites for the second R B. Robert Tunyon. 49% of snaps in week one. You just throw the week out, see what yes, happens this week. MVS, Mike, you brought him up as a as kind of a deeper play. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm curious to see what Randall Cobb does because he wasn't doing a lot with Aaron Rodgers, but then ends up with, well, he only had one catch. So never mind. <laughs> Not doing a lot with anybody. Well, I saw a stat line. I thought he had more targets from Jordan Love at the end of the game, but uh, must have been my imagination. 
DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams, are you playing both? Yeah. Swift I, I, for sure, and then Jamal Williams. Uh, I, I, I would like to hear a little bit more about the chest injury uh, that has him limited in practice, but this this could just be a, the tape. Rewind the tape of last week, and the Lions are getting – smashed again and and the whole offense is throw to TJ Hawkinson and dump off to the running backs. Yeah, assuming that he's back at practice today or that the injury is not a concern with the chest injury for Jamal Williams, I would I would start him. I would start Jamal Williams over AJ Dillon and over James Conner. Not, you know, I, it's funny because he's not the favorite. He's the heavy underdog, but we talked about it. there's just not a lot of weapons here in Detroit and they are going to let both Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift touch the ball a ton. And Tyrell what? Williams, their number one wide receiver, he's currently still in the concussion protocol. It is a, it's a Monday night game, so perhaps he gets cleared. But if Williams is out for the whole game, that's that's another massive hit to the pass catching court. Yeah, at which point you could look desperately at uh, Cephas on the Detroit offense for the number three quarterback in fantasy football. Oh, King Goffrey. Uh, with 57 attempts in week one for for yes. Jared Goff and um, a team that gave up 38 points. Like, there's plenty of... Hockey-lees, hockey-lees. There's plenty of uh, opportunity for this game to turn into like a, a quarter of garbage time, yes. which is what Goff did last week. So... Look, I'm not I, – I would look at Cephas in desperation if Tyrell was out. Okay. Um, if you need DFS help, we do have a DFS podcast. Yeah. A couple hooligans host it, not me. Um, but people seem to the, like it. On the hool. What is what – is, what? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> weird. Uh, Zach Moss was inactive in week one, looked good in practice this week. Part of it was health, according to Sean McDermott. So that's something interesting to pay attention to. Um, and like I said, the Injury Blitz podcast and the game day alerts can be found at jointhefoot.com. Time for our face-off. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, look, it's not the way I wanted the first week of Fantasy Face-Off to go. Mm. We were going head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head on DraftKings, each with our own lineup. You guys ended up – now, we don't tell each other the lineups beforehand, but you guys ended up Quite pretty a bit of similar, crossover. like four or five players well, not the fantasy points-wise, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Mike, Mike finished second is our, what was happened. The places we did not cross over, Jason, were I had Mostert and Calvin Ridley mm -hmm. that uh, – it didn't work. Jason Cooper had Cup Cooper was, Cup. Oh, Cooper Cup of coffee. Cooper Cup of coffee. Tyshawn, Devonta Smith, Jalen Hurts. Jason won with 170 points. Mike at 123. I was at 104. Raheem Mostert didn't really help. So no. That means I am the. I, I'm privileged because I'm the inaugural spinner. Oh, congratulations of the Wheel of Shame. Wheel of Shame. Oh. Which really, I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, you will get the benefit of the wheel of shame. I will not receive the benefit. I will receive its retribution upon my soul for a third place finish. We'll reveal our week two lineups, but first, and it's an owl for the for the people listening. Yeah, at I'll home. put this together. Uh, let people know just a couple of the options of of the shameful things that one of us will have to wear each week. Sure. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, like embarrassing masks, hats, wigs, um, oh things that, that hopefully don't degrade the audio side of our podcast. Uh, but we got fake mustaches, lipstick, uh, bicycle helmets. <laughs> Lipsticks on there? Bald caps. Oh, yeah. So, and I, and I, have, to, I have to wear this. Well, if you well, we'll see what correct. you get. Let's we'll, give it a spin. Let's find out what right, happens if you put lipstick it. on a pig. Oh, right. <laughs> All right, oh, it is spinning uh, clown fedora. wig. Fedora. Nope. Nope, nope it's not <laughs> the fedora. <laughs> yes, chicken mask. <laughs> You're going to wear I thought you it. said it wasn't going to degrade the show. Oh, no, it's just Oh, it's going to degrade not the, the show. audio. Oh, fantastic. So I have to. Okay. All right. All right well, I got a chick. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, Andy good. gets to Can do see this, this <laughs> segment in a chicken mask as we victors here reveal our lineups for week two. <laughs> oh, you How do I? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Loud and clear, Mr. Well, Chicken. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Um, all Colonel right. Clucks over so there. So, week two lineups, and I can avoid this <laughs> if I win? That's right. You just don't have to. All you have to do is not lose. I, I look like an idiot. 
Uh, yeah, go to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to get in on watching Andy do this segment in a chicken mask. And we'll um, get some serious fantasy analysis going on over there, man. I want to hear it. Look, I'm not going to be a chicken with this lineup. I'm going after it this week. Uh, let's start with – hold on. I'm going to try to see if I can see through these eye holes. Let's start at the quarterback position. I decided to go with the top guy. I went with Kyla Murray at home. Uh, 8,200 buckaroos, but okay. I won it at home. I get it. I am going with who I think has a good shot of being the top guy. Dak Prescott, $6,800. I want a lot of pieces in that Chargers-Cowboys game. Mike? Ditto. Oh, nice uh, of pick. Course. Nice pick. Of course. Dak Prescott, I want in on that matchup. All right. Well, I do want part of that game. My running backs, uh, one of them, Austin Eckler, part of the Dallas-Los Angeles game. Ooh, okay. 7,300. And then I'm going Najee Harris against Las Vegas at home every snap, 6,300. All right, at running back, I'm I'm. It's not a great matchup, but he's not ten thousand yet. Christian McCaffrey's locked in my lineup until he's ten thousand, nice. and I'm going Ezekiel Elliott back in that Cowboys game. He's only sixty two hundred. Um, I love my top three there. Yeah, I like the price on Zeke, but I I bypass that. Uh, I also have Najee. The sixty three hundred was too alluring. I've got Daryl Henderson uh, taking mm. on the Colts fifty seven hundred. I think that Henderson's week was truly understated. Just he was he he was the workhorse for that team, just didn't get a touchdown. Wide receivers, I got some powerhouses in here. DK Metcalf at seventy six hundred in that matchup against Tennessee. Saw all I needed to see of Tennessee last week on the defensive <laughs> side. C D Lamb. I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm laughing at that DK Metcalf. I'm laughing because you look <laughs> so you stupid. You look so stupid. It's a pretty good match. Oh, it's fantastic. So I'm going to go uh, CeeDee Lamb in that Charger game uh, with Dak, uh, 6,400. And then I I put A.J. Green in the lineup at 3,700. No, you didn't. I did at home against Minnesota. So he, he was a bargain price, obviously. Oh, yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> hey, call your shot. Uh, at wide receiver, I've got Keenan Allen. It's full PPR. I'm going to get all those points in that Dallas Chargers matchup. Coop a cup of coffee came through week one. He's okay. coming through week two again. And then uh, at only 3,800, I think KJ Hamler is a oh, I like it, is yeah. someone that should be in. I mean, he was locked. He was an absolute lock for me in, in these lineups. Well, I'm, I'm going with the super stack, fellas. I've got Dak Prescott, and I'm taking both of them. I got Amari Cooper and CD Lamb. I'm putting, uh, pun intended, all my eggs into that basket of that matchup. Uh, very excited for that. And then my third wide receiver. Oh, who's this guy? Chris Godwin at 6,600. Uh, very excited for the target share that he saw last week. I have Lamb in mind, but I thought about adding Cedric Wilson for the bare minimum mm. 3,000. Yeah, not bad. Uh, not a bad play. But instead, at 3,000 on the dot, I went with Donovan Peoples-Jones. Uh, in the Houston matchup for Cleveland, uh, there's a chance Anthony Schwartz is banged up. Not going to have OBJ. Peoples Jones could have a surprise game for Mike. Can't take me seriously right now. <laughs> no, I cannot. Uh, and then at at tight end, I've got Noah Fant for forty two hundred, and the Saints defense for thirty one hundred okay. against the Carolina Panthers. Uh, at tight end, I've got Jared Kuk uh, in Ditto. that game, thirty nine hundred, um, and then at flex, Terrace Marshall Jr. only thirty three hundred uh, should get enough PPR work, and at defense. This is the Arizona Cardinals. Oh I'm gosh. going for those sacks against Minnesota. We did it again, Jason. So my tight end is Jared Cook at 3,900. Well the, done. The target volume for that price is too excellent. The Cardinals against the Minnesota offensive line for 2,900 is excellent. Where we differ is you took Hamler. I took the uh, the other wide receiver. I took Tim Patrick for 4,600 to fill into my flex. But I'm going to ride or die with that Dallas game. I'm not wearing a mask again next week, boys. <laughs> no, hopefully it's lipstick. Uh, I will say that if you two have a if if the Charger game doesn't end up the way you want it to. Oh yeah, one of us is wearing the mask. We we got too many two too many pieces in that game. All right, Brooksy, do we have? Uh, I guess that wraps it up. Don't forget to download the DraftKings app now and use the code Ballers this week. New customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's the code BALLERS, only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. And as always, stay tuned for the Listener League. We'll post information 
It is so great watching you do this in a chicken mask. Uh, I uh, look, I deserved it, but AJ Green's going to help me this week, and I'll be I'll be off the schneid. All right, don't forget Sunday live one hour before kickoff on Sunday. You can get there ballerslive.com. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell. You'll get the notification when Mike is live and tilting on Sunday morning. Oh yeah, so much tilting. That is going to do it for me and this mask. Thank you for tuning in and listening, supporting the show. And I'll see you on Sunday, Footland. Good luck on the weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.